Nature, now that's how we spell the mark. I mean, it's a nature, not a very physical. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and if I look and sound like I'm a kid in a candy store, it's because what I named as my personal favorite new fifth wheel for 2021 is back in a 22 and better than ever. This is the Flurb, the front living rear bath. This has, the whole thing is just twisted sistered all around. The, the living room is backwards. The kitchen is twisted, but awesome. It has a bigger, better bathroom than what I have in my house, and that is no joking, no token Steve Miller right there. Nobody called that guy Maurice, by the way. I bet nobody called that guy Maurice, but neither here nor there. Um, Jake, I'll listen to your feedback also. Uh, I, first of all, I love how they dressed up the exterior. The interior is still absolutely on point. But uh, there's a lot of people said, half bath, I don't want a toilet in my kitchen. I'm not planning on having guests. I want a pantry. They said, you got it. They offer a butler pantry option now in place of the half bath on this. We're looking at the half bath version today. But remember, we could have something different in stock and we can always get you something else if you don't like what we have in stock or if we're sold out or whatever, you know. Just because we don't have it doesn't mean we can't get it. Um, what's great about like this, it, it's not just like, oh, you can tow it somewhere and park it and it's got a nice living room. The outside doesn't suck either. And I don't just mean the cosmetic facelift, which I think looks, I personally like way better than last year. That's subjective, but that's my preference. Um, the uh, exterior storage is fantastic with the elevated rear end, but they also included on this a really nice outside camp kitchen with a big black stone griddle that is really hard to find in a non-bunkhouse model. But we've got amazing guests sleeping up here. The entertainment rocks. This thing rocks my freaking socks off every time it comes in here. I'm always like, I'm gonna, eh, it'll be okay. This, this thing is awesome. It always blows me away. Um, obviously, I like it. There's no secret about that. But I'm always very interested. What is your feedback? What is your input? As we go through here, let me know the things you like, the points of concern you might have, the things that you would change given the opportunity. And uh, if you haven't done so, if you appreciate the way that I'll tell you the good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can always catch the next one we have coming through and know you're getting fair info. So the whole RV's backwards. I figured why not do our video backwards, although I'm not going to actually run it in reverse footage so that it sounds like you're speaking that weird alien demonic language. But uh, instead, I wanted to show you how this one has like some of the very best traveling access that a, 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 you're gonna find in a front living room. They are not known for being able to like, access the bedroom to access a toilet in transit. Although this does now have a butler pantry option that when it first came out last year, uh, you know, it only had the half bath. So if you don't like that toilet there, you can make it just a pantry. One of the reasons we've actually specifically outfitted this one though with a two-way fridge is that it is far more travel accessible than the residential fridge. Although a big model like this, I could very easily see somebody saying, uh, yeah, look, I'm not towing this thing. I'm going to be uh, just parking it somewhere, and that's going to be good enough for me. Because the resi fridge, uh, you, you can't really get to a whole lot in here, especially the freezer section. And for the most part, the two-way fridge, you can access pretty much everything. So, hope you like a little change of pace starting with her with the slide closed here. But let's get her in destination mode. And if you haven't done so already, this is your fair warning. You're going to want to go get some popcorn or lately here, my weakness has been white cheddar cheese at grooves. Oh my Lord. I, I, I don't, it's, it's criminal how much flavor they pack into those things. They've, they've got to be more addictive than cigarettes. I swear. Anyway, that's, you know, uh, probably why I, I just keep padding on the pandemic poundage here. This thing's amazing. There are so many amazing, like the completely uh, carpetless floor decking. Uh, there's, we'll see a tiny strip of carpet maybe just in front of the, uh, um, what am I wanting to say? Theater seat up front. I'll explain why that's there when we get there. But I mean, th the hardest part I have on this one is trying to figure out where to start, but it's the flurb, the front living, the rear bath. So we're going to start at the front living and work our way around. But what's awesome about this one, this is one of those RVs where a lot of times like the front living room, the living room really gets all the glory. But in this one, every room, I think, is really treated with a lot of attention. Look at this noise. Because right away, boom, they hit you right in the face with this crazy 
Double Barrel Entertainment Center, the Sir Mix-a-Lot, uh, double up, uh, uh. everybody can keep an eye on the TV kind of thing. And that's what's so cool about this. It's an amazing, like, you know, seasonal couple's retirement rig. But it's also, if you note here, like, between the kitchen setup, the, uh, you know, the, the dual, extra wide, extra long height of beds that we have in here that turns into one giant m -m -m mega bunk. This thing... It's as much about hanging out alone as it is entertaining family and friends. This is maybe like one of the most epic ultimate entertainers models I have ever seen. Uh, so uh, over here, we're kind of at the point of view of one of those uh, two hide -a bed uh, things right there. It's very social. It's very engaged. There's so many things I like about this. Now, all of the windows have a blackout roller shade. I've kind of pulled it partially shut on that front bed right there. Uh, <laughs> bed, yeah, couch right there. But I want to mention that this has like a removable pontoon style thing. So uh, if you need the separation anxiety a little bit there in the uh, individual heat massage reclining theater seat, you got it. If you need it to be a little more cuddlicious, cuddle compliant, you can do that too. And by the way, behind the uh, couch here, there's household outlets uh, on both sides back there. So it'd be very easy to have like phone chargers hanging down or something like that. It's just, it's a very smart design. Now I mentioned there's a little strip of carpet. I don't want to, if I call this completely carpetless, somebody would call me out on semantics, but I would technically be wrong, certainly. This right here, you don't normally see this. This is normally the area under the closet of the fifth wheel. That right there is like all of the extra bulk structure that you need to support uh, you know, the kingpin uh, set up on a, uh, on a big bad rig like this thing right here. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, carpeting right there, it is a easy to work with simple kind of covering, but any area that you're doing any sort of significant walking is, is uh, totally carpetless. I actually don't mind the little strip of carpet right there. I have this, uh, like, like my toes, my toes get cold really easy. I'm I'm long. I'm not as active as I should be, so my blood circulation isn't exactly great. I don't mind having a little bit, uh, you know, uh, organic tootsie warmer going on right there. Now, speaking of going on, check out what's going on up top here. So first of all, you're seeing slide accent lighting above all these slides, and this is a big barreled vaulted roof. At the top of this barrel, it's six foot eight. <laughs> I mean. Look, at, it's huge. That's one of the things North Point and Pinnacle do so, so well. They give us this just expansive, wide open, comfortable living area up here. Now, you've also got a, uh, not, you don't have to upgrade to like a little Wi-Fi LTE unit. That's all built right into this right here. And the TV that we saw in the kitchen, well, that's just the appetizer, baby. This thing's ridiculous. Because straight across from you, in that power lift, we have an extra large TV on this side. And I love that little beam up top. And that's one of the other things that I really like about this one. The, uh, the beam up top and the way the TV comes up, you can actually sort of partition off the living room in here uh, to, to give it a little clearer definition as opposed to just being one open room. That's also kind of nice for like evening privacy. You just feel, I don't know, you just feel a little more separated, I guess. At least that is when you want it to feel separated. If we are just shooting the breeze and chewing the fat or whatever else you might call it, you can just open this thing right up and suddenly it's just so open and airy by comparison. Uh, one of the other things here while we're right up top I want to focus on is uh, the, the dual whisper ducted air conditioning, 30,000 BTU dual whisper ducted centralized air system on this. Uh, and if you don't see the square, buddy you won't hear the air you may also notice look at that entry door window there's actually the privacy shade in there one of those things that i harp on all the time where the others don't well jaco does now for the most part again primarily it's a couple's rig but if you take note there is a uh, extra little set of tables you can pull out here and you have that uh extension leaf basically built right in you can pull that out whenever you need give yourself a little more space and Again, it's carpetless where it counts. I know this one's not technically 100% carpetless, but it's carpetless where it counts. And we, we mentioned the windows on this. Look at the total. This is the campsite of the RV. Look at the total window coverage on this. It's got like 270 degrees of viewing. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you sit. You can see anything and everything you want. 
And other than just the, the kitchen viewing window over here, uh, behind that big four burner insignia stove, which is just awesome, giant oven on this, if you're actually gonna cook, oh man, you can get more cookies and biscuits. One of the things that I say sometimes is there's some RVs, if you hit a pigeon on the way, uh, you know, they got an oven where you can basically cook a pigeon. If you're lucky, you could cook a game hen. This thing, you could cook a small bird. Roadkill. <laughs> Yuck. Remember those old Roadkill Cafe shirts and stuff? Oh, I love those. They actually banned those in my high school because the students were grossing out the teachers. <laughs> Central vacuum system down there with the handy little electric dustpan. And then we start getting into the real storage. And I suppose, since this is kind of bolted onto the entertainment center, I think this qualifies for RV nerdism number 37, the pantry tainment storage center right here. Although it is nice, is it's not like you got to wrestle a TV out of the way to get to it. And that thing, it, it's just, it's all storage. It's all storage. And they did something here. Front living rooms very rarely do. Remember how I was saying, I feel like each room in this gets the special attention it deserves. It's not just about the living room or whatever. You've got that awesome stove. You've got uh, the, uh, I don't know, I, I just call it the symmetry kitchen. It has such a good look. Of course, when I've got things like that giant uh, convection microwave opened up right here, it doesn't look quite as symmetrical. Now you have two refrigerator choices. This is the gas electric two-way. It allows for a little bit more traveling access. So if you're going to be uh, running around, that might be an option for you. Uh, alternatively, the uh, residential refrigerator uh, is a little bit larger, uh, has an inverter, ice maker, water dispenser, and connects to the Jayco drinking water system, which is the little tap that you see down there. Um, basically, it's got a five-gallon Culligan jug you can exchange for pennies on the dollar compared to tons of bottled water that you now have to try to store everywhere. And as we look at our island, the uh, you know awesome qualities from last year, like that handy slide-out tray so you don't have to go digging on your hands and knees to get stuff, the built-in wastebasket, the sectionalized silverware drawer, those all come back. They did, uh, new for 22 though, switch over to a big stainless farm sink as opposed to a, uh, a, a dual basin sink. And I've seen some very interesting responses to that. So I guess more than anything, I'm just open to uh, your opinion. I like the farm sink basically, but I will also tell you, I suspect the way that I personally RV, to give you an idea, I tend to camp in a J Flight SLX 264 BH, which, which if you don't know, is a starter smarter class, no slide uh, bunkhouse model. That's a little bit more my speed. So if, if, you know, my tastes and preference are a little different than yours, I guess I get that. I meant to have this open because it also addresses one of the other serious pet peeves that I have, especially in big fifth wheels, the ones that don't give me a place to hang a coat or kick my shoes off by the door, well, this one doesn't have that problem. They thought ahead and they nailed it. Now, once again, we're looking at the default arrangement over here with the half bath, but you do have a, uh, a butler, speaking of butt, <laughs> a butler pantry option that you can put in here. You've got those backlit morning mirrors. You'll see that in the master bathroom as well. And you may have noticed we're looking at the modern farmhouse decor today, but you do have an alternative choice to that. And that's not a small sink. Uh, you can actually get adult hands in here. It's just, it's a really big countertop. Good storage space down below there as well, as far as half bath storage goes. And just in case you're curious what kind of leg room you have around this thing, it is a uh, 6'3 pandemic poundage RV nerd tested and approved, brother. As we work our way up the hallway right in front of the entry door, we meet our smart command system in a very, huh, you know, smart location. What I like about this is you don't have to do the touch screen thing. And by the way, you can um, set this up for like internet accessibility. This RV has voice command now, standard, built in. It has tire pressure monitoring system, all kind of built in and shared into that uh, J command system right there. But that's a little voice command module. You don't have to use it. Um, we can get you a little flyer and all the commands you can, like you can operate lights, uh, awnings, like a lot of stuff you can operate on that, which is really cool. I don't know about you, I use Siri all the time, which is uh, sometimes led to some very interesting unintended uh, texts between my wife and myself. But what I like is you don't have to use this. You don't have to use voice command. You just wanna come in, you just want to open the awnings, open the slides, you can do all that. There's a button for it. You wanna just 
turn the lights off and on, you can turn the lights off and on. Speaking of which, by the way, one of the things people don't realize is some of these screens actually scroll. So just a little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. Now, <clears throat> all around the RV, you're going to find these little guys. These are little extensions of the BM Pro system. And every one of these will do stuff that's a little bit different. Like this is our, our little thing right here. We can turn on and off our bedroom lights as we're coming in and out. Uh, the uh, Look at the under the bathroom counter right there. There's little like air traffic controller night lights, but the, the, the buttons that are on this panel will be different from the buttons on that panel from the one like say in the living room or something like that. They're very context sensitive as to where they're located in the RV. It just makes a ton of sense. I, I really like that system. Now, standard in a North Point is a residential queen, 60 by 80. Uh, the overwhelming demand that we have, though, is for the 70 by 80 king bed that we're looking at up here. And below that, you start to see some pretty nice storage capacity right there. But straight across from you is actually uh, just an entire storage wall, effectively. Uh, just tons of dresser space. You see a hanging closet on the right, all the dresser space down below. And when you're laying in bed like this, you are at a very comfortable viewing angle because the TV is downward dog just a little bit. That's a technical term right there. But you might have looked at that and said, yeah, I'm a little limited on hanging storage though. Well, that's where the bathroom comes in. And I'm going to call this thing the Go-Go Gadget Hanging Closet because it can only become anything you want. So, you need the extra hanging space? You got it. You need some dresser space? Go, go, gadget dresser! And you got it. Not to mention, uh, in case you were kind of curious, that is going to be your prep point for either a combo or stackable washer-dryer. You can do either in here. The floor space is just wide open. I'll get you a better look at that real quick. But um, first, just to give you a little understanding of the kind of toilet space that's there, that's available, I found it perfectly sufficient. Um, I, I, I think it'll work for uh, most anybody, but really guys, it's, it's when you walk, it's, I've almost done you a disservice by starting you by looking at the bathroom from this direction. And when we roll it over, flip it and reverse it, come in from the uh, bedroom direction, this, this thing just, it just blows me away. I'm normally not a big fan. I don't normally see the sense or see the point of a double sink or a dual lavatory, as it were, uh, in, in a model like this. But I think that there was, if there was ever a time to pull it off, this really works right here. This is an actual two-butt bathroom. <laughs> uh, you know, if you are living, working out of a work camping, you both have to get up in the morning. You can both kind of get around here. Now you can see just awesome storage. There's a power outlet next to either sink in case you need it, by the way. And again, that little air traffic controller lighting down below is very handy. And of course, like all North Points and Pinnacles, you have that awesome, easy walk-in shower right there. I don't think I mentioned this in the kitchen. It's pretty standard fare for luxury fifth wheels, but I don't want to neglect it. You have uh, those rain-sensoring max air fans, uh, you know, up in the ceiling here. Now, speaking of up in the ceiling, uh, take note. You don't have to have your head up in the bubble in this thing unless you're you're going to have to be like six and a half foot tall for headroom to even begin to be an issue in here. Uh, you can have as you know a little extra space in here if you need. You got that 300 pound rated teak seat, and one of the things that I kind of thought in previous years is that would be a handy spot to be able to set like your body wash or your shampoos or whatever. But you don't even have to worry about that now because they got the little corner shower beer holder and soap caddy built right into this height adjustable shower uh, hardware. And is it just me or is that thing? It looks like a little pickleball paddle. <laughs> And despite everything we've talked about, we haven't even stepped foot outside. So, you know, what is it that has made uh, North Point and Pinnacle are among the most popular big luxury fifth wheels out there? Like, they've, they've really surged in the last couple seasons. Uh, I think the fact that they've continued to keep their foot on the development uh, pedal while everybody else has kind of said, oh, okay, we're just going to kind of hold still for a little bit until things settle down. Jake always said, let's continue to improve ourselves. And I think nowhere is there a better example of that than the improved exterior on this North Point. I, that's subjective. I know some people probably really think, oh, it was better before. I really like the high definition look of this thing. I don't know why, because the movie Tron was all about 
neon stuff with old Mr. Flynn getting sucked into the computer. The 80s was a wild time, man. You could literally make a movie about anything. It was hilarious. But um, it just, I don't know. It looks it looks like it, it, it came from the year 3021 to me. <laughs> Although it doesn't have the uh, anti-gravity pads or the atmospheric re-entry package. That being said, every single Jayco fifth wheel is tested and proven, zero to 100 degree rated at the very least. Um, the, uh, you know, they, they have awesome weathering packages like that. It's also uh, another thing. Their warranties have allowances for full-time RVing. Um, now, in a big fifth wheel segment, that is pretty common, but I don't want to neglect that fact. Here's the little uh, jug that I mentioned for the uh, Jayco drinking water system. And as you see, you've got yourself a, a pretty decent front pass-through, given the fact that it's a front living room with a smaller area to have a pass-through. But this is only one of like three exterior storage bays on this RV. I think that's already pretty decent. And they still maintain the front drop frame here to help maximize that capacity. You'll see the double-sided radiant barrier layered material that is visible here in the uh, upper deck, but they will use that anytime there's a level change that's in the belly, the nose cap across the roof, in the slide floors. Jayco's been doing that for a long time. Six point hydraulic auto leveling. And what's really cool is Jayco basically realized you could use, I think it's like Dexter brake fluid or something like that in that system because that stuff doesn't freeze up. And that's one of the reasons they'd used an electric system for so long is so that they could have an RV that fully functioned when it was cold so that your, your level and juice didn't you know freeze up effectively. Now, uh, this is the standard front end here. There is a uh, generator prep option. Uh, and when you do that, you double the propane, you go to triple 40 pound tanks and you could shove like four or six batteries in that right hand compartment if you are so inclined. We are uh, backup and side camera ready so you can have a good view of what you're doing. And speaking of having an idea of what's going on, you don't need the four non blondes to tell everybody that you're turning this big behemoth because it has the J-Smart lighting system. That was a smooth little four non blondes reference right there, wasn't it? <laughs> now, you've got two awnings because at a glance, you look at this one and you go, huh, man, my awning space is going to get eaten up by that nice, big, deep dining slide. And it is cool that it covers the entry door, but you've got a second awning dedicated exclusively to your like rear patio cookout uh, grilling station back here. And again, you have d -d 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 double the pass through capacity on this. And notice our outside speakers are down here in the skirt so you don't have to blow the neighbors away by cranking your music up just so that you can hear it. There's motion lighting all over every outside compartment on this. So kind of like your refrigerator, you can wonder if it actually turns off. Pro tip, um, I actually did climb in one of those and, and, and had somebody uh, shut the door behind me. Thankfully, they let me out, uh, albeit eventually. Um, you, you can't give people as much grief as I do without expecting a little bit in return. So I didn't take any offense to that. And I can tell you, yeah, as long as you can stay still long enough, it will shut off. Um, <laughs> now, quick note, this RV comes standard with a 22 inch Blackstone. This is the Invisio series, which is still uh, loaded on a container ship somewhere off the coast of our country right now. As soon as it makes landfall, uh, basically Blackstone will send you uh, the griddle. If by the time you purchase your RV, they haven't been able to sort, uh, sort out that whole supply chain situation. But look at the way this telescopes all around. You can have as much or as little space here. You've got a little bonus drawer for utensils right here when you need it but it's all galvanized, it's all rolled steel. It is on some insane heavy duty drawer glides so that when you're done with it, you just tuck that sucker right away. And look at even down below this where they don't expect you to look. They're still doing that toy hauler rubberized garage flooring in there, just like they did in the pass-through compartments, plural, which we've only seen two out of three of so far. I think this actually has more outside storage than almost any other uh, North Point. Not to mention, <coughs> pardon me, real sink, with a real drain and as if the fridge directly inside the door wasn't going to do the job you got an outside little mini fridge there too as i like to call it dad's medicine cabinet that's where you keep the bottled water and the barley pop what is your drink of choice when you're camping what's that first thing you always get in your hand let me know um back here you see that uh they have their uh even on this big model they still put the 3,000 pound towing hitch on the back 
So you've got a two inch receiver hitch, 300 pound accessory limit. You can obviously tow some behind this if you're in a state that allows for something that long to be towed. You're a braver person than me, but um, everybody camps different. There's some people who drive like semis for a living, so you're far more capable than I am, I'm sure. But uh, you've also got, uh, you know, your four-way wiring harness over here, your safety chain hooks. Apparently I've got a fan hollering out here behind me. I'll catch up with them in just a minute. But now we've got this little pass-through storage trunk over here. You can keep a lot of junk in that trunk. Now down below that and behind the rear accessory hitch, you've actually got a, one of those handy little sewer hose caddy tubes. That's a new for 22 feature. That is something that I think a lot of people really felt was weirdly missing on a lot of Jayco fifth wheels and pretty much all of them have that. Now like all the North Points, all the Pinnacles, I think Eagle also has those uh, as memory serves, but uh, I've been hit with a lot of lefts and rights today. Every time I turn around, I, uh, I, I've been uh, greeting somebody who wanted to come in and say hi, and I, I love it. That's very humbling. I, I really appreciate the opportunity and uh, all the people that I get to meet doing this job. It's, it's just awesome. Before we hop upstairs, we've got our Goodyear Endurance Beast radials. And this has the Jayco five-star ride and handling package. We got the Goodyears, the Moride CRE 3000 uh, shock dampening suspension, Dexter axles, uh, lubricating or lubricatable? Is that a word? It is now. Lubricatable. Uh, wet bolt fasteners, the shock dampening pin box. Not to mention, remember, turn signal safety lighting, camera prep, all those things. We can get you a full observation suite if that's what you want. And you know, it's a good thing they bulked those ladders up to 250 pounds the way I've been putting on weight. So, in case you weren't aware, yes, the ladders hold more weight now. <laughs> That's a newer thing for 22. That's a, an industry-wide regulation, though. Now, in the bathroom, uh, in the uh, kitchen area, you have those big XL vent fans. And I'm going to try to turn the camera slow. I know you're not seeing much right now. I don't want to make you motion sick. They have the little ears on them. If you want to add a little roof vent cover, you could do that. Um, I, I definitely would. No more than those costs. It just seems silly uh, to not do it. And uh, you can also see that roof solar prep plug right there. Now, uh, North Points are one of the Jayco series that actually has access to all of the various uh, Overlander solar packages. That's their name for their whole solar series. Uh, there's a 190 watt package, there's a bigger package as an inverter, and then they just recently announced the new Overlander EXT, which is going to have things like a 12 volt air conditioner, all kinds of lithium batteries, big hybrid inverters, like 1200 watts of solar juice coming up here. You can just straight coat and cover and flood the roof of this with solar if you're so inclined. Or pull it up to a park, plug it in, never worry about it. I call that glade camping. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> so what should we name this RV? I think my name for it is Stacy's Mom, because it's got it going on. <laughs> and if that song, Old Fountains of Wayne, is not stuck in your head now... I'm, I'm sure it will be <laughs> at some point in the day. You're just going to be sitting there, just microwaving a hot pocket. I don't know. And instead of going, hot pocket, you're going to start going, Stacy's mom has got... He did it. He did it. He got it stuck in my head. Anyway, um, again, let me know what you love about it. Let me know what you'd want to see change given the opportunity. Whether you're curious or whether you're serious, leave you a link in the video description so you can always check for pricing and availability. We really look forward to seeing you on the next one. So take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy Halo Camping, everyone.